and behold, the Real Jesus Broadcast, brought to you by the Jesus Only Broadcasting Network, located at www.jobn.tv, where you can go and see and hear the preaching of the Apostles' Doctrine of Christ, the Jesus Only Doctrine. Why Jesus Only? Because he is the blessed and only potentate, King of kings, Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, nor see, nor can see me. Now, many people think we're just waiting around for a rapture. And then uh, the first Thessalonians 4, 17, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air, and, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort you one another with these words. That's all, but there's a work of God that will take place before the second advent when the Lord himself comes a second time without sin unto salvation. And this is what we'll address today. It's called the work of the ministry. The work of the ministry is a Jesus ministry. For this gospel of the kingdom, the real kingdom, not so many different denominations, but the gospel, this gospel of the kingdom, will be preached to all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end will come. Whosoever overcometh to the end, the same shall be saved. What is this work of the ministry? What is this work of God? What is this work of judgment? That in Jeremiah 8, that God says, Crane swallow observe the time of their coming. The stork knows her appointed time, but my people know not the judgment of the Lord. Judgment must first begin at the house of God. Why? It's going to separate the righteous from the wicked, the holy from the profane, those that serve God versus those that do not serve God, the righteous from the hypocrite. And uh, these are the last of the last days. For the Spirit speaketh expressly, then in the latter days some shall depart from the faith, given heed to seducing spirits, doctrines of devils, having the conscience sit with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and abstaining from meats which God has sanctified by the word of God in prayer. We're going to talk about the work of the ministry. For God gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. To we all come into the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God and to a perfect man and to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Jesus Growing up into him in all things, those are the things of faith. For faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. Jesus said, I have many things to tell your apostles, but you're not able to bear them now. But the comfort of the Holy Ghost, when he comes, he'll speak of me, for all that's the Father's given is given unto me. Therefore, I said he would speak of me and show you things which will come to pass. That is things that God hath laid up for them that love him when he makes up his diadem. Paul put it this way, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of men. The things that God hath prepared for them that love him, that is revealed by the Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yes, the deep things of God. So the revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. He sent and signified it by his angel under John. Notice it's a signified. It's a sign. I signified it. I verified it. And it's verified with signs, miracles, and wonders, and divers gifts of the Holy Ghost. As we get into the broadcast about the work of God, we're going to see there is a sealing. Now, it's a work of a signet, and it's a signature or sign and Jesus is a sign to the people. That sign is the Alof Tov. The Alof Tov is uh, the Hebrew abecedary, which is in Psalm 119, which is the longest chapter in the Word of God. It'll start with Alof, and it'll go eight verses. Then it'll go to Beth and go to eight verses, 22 letters in the Hebrew abecedary, the alphabet, and it speaks of light. So when we talk about the seven golden candlesticks there, the branches, the shamash, that center branch, is the servant branch. Even though Jesus is God Almighty, he came as a servant to all mankind. And it's revealed in the candlestick. The center shamash, or servant branch, went higher than all the other branches with its lamp. It had four knops of bowls on it with a half of egg of oil in each one that literally fed the lamp. 
on each of the six branches that proceeded in and out of the servant branch. Uh, Jesus said, I'm the vine and you are the branches. There's seven lamps. And in the seven lamps there on the branches, there's three knops of bowls on each of the six branches. And the three knops of bowls on six branches, of course, is 18 knops of bowls, half egg of oil, of a beaten olive work in each one of them to feed the seven lamps. And then on the center shamash, we have four. One speaks of the lion, second man, third ox and eagle, which is none other than Jesus Christ, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That four on the center shamash gives us 22, which is the number of light, which is the Allah Tav in Psalm 119, there, which is the longest chapter in the Word of God, and how can we know the Word of God without knowing the letters that make up the Word, which is the attributes. Now, all the attributes of God from the aloft to the top, Jesus claimed that he is all of them. In Revelation 1.8, Jesus said, I'm Alpha and Omega. That is the Greek uh, aloft tav in the Hebrew, which is the same as the English A to Z. He is everything that God is, was, or ever will be. We see that also in the first seven words, uh, in uh, Genesis 1, verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Bereshit bara Elohim 8. 8 is this servant. And there, Bereshit bara Elohim 8. Hashemayim, Bayert, High Earth. This 8 is the Allah of Tav, and that's what created all things. And Jesus is that Allah of Tav. He is uh, the Alpha and Omega. He is the 8 to the Z of everything that God is, was, uh, or ever will be. He is that spirit. And every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, that's Jehovah God Almighty, to the glory of the Father, not to the glory of the Son, to the glory of the Father, for the Son of God, in Isaiah 9 and 5, this battle is with confused noise. Everyone has a different idea about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Just uh, say, Jesus, come into my heart and you're saved. Uh, don't have to live it. Just confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Forget about believing in your heart. And, you know, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. What's that? Just Jesus. No, the Lord Jesus. Confess with thy mouth. If thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord. The Lord Jesus is in the loft of. That's the Lord Jehovah God Almighty. That's not with a mental uh, accent saying, I believe Jesus is Lord. That's, a, that's not confession. That's just speaking, Jesus is Lord. But if I will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, what? For as uh, uh, the, the mouth speaketh, as the heart believes, so the mouth speaks. Well, whosoever confesses Jesus Christ is Lord and believes in thine heart. The heart is the spirit. Then thou shalt be saved with, with confession. Uh, is made by the mouth unto salvation, and but with the heart man believeth. The heart, it's a spirit issue. The spirit of the man or woman, there must be circumcised, that the body of the sins of the flesh be cut off, and that is only by baptism and the circumcision of the heart to circumcise it from dead works uh, to serve the living God. We'll find uh, that that conscience is purged. How? Romans 2, 28, 29 states that he is not a Jew that is one outwardly in the circumcision of the flesh, but he is a Jew that is one inwardly and the circumcision of the heart, and that in the spirit, whose praise is not of, not of men, but of God. Romans 2, 28 and 29. We also see it in Romans 6, 1 through 4. What? No, you're not as many as were baptized. Into Christ were baptized unto his death. Romans 6, 4, why? That the body of the sins of the flesh might be destroyed. That's how you have your conscience purged from dead works to serve the living God through baptism, which is a circumcision of the heart. We see that also in Colossians 2, verse 10 through 12. You're complete in him who's the head of all principality and power. Who you're circumcised with a circumcision made without hands and the putting off of the sins of the body of the flesh. The body of the sins of the flesh is in this spirit. It must be circumcised. There's only one way. You can't say it by Jesus coming into my heart. You can't say it by saying this sinner's prayer. The heart will remain the same. It must be done by baptism. Jesus stated in Mark 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. 
I know most people say, well, the preachers in different denominations say baptism doesn't save you. Well, that's not what Peter said in 1 Peter 3. He said there in the days of the long suffering of God and the days of Noah, which eight souls were saved by water. Saved by water? Yes. The like figure. Oh, that was the figure? The like figure, baptism does also now save us. Not the putting away the filth of the flesh, not taking a shower, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. How did you get the conscience perched from dead works? By baptism. Somebody said, well, I got baptized, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. You got baptized in the name in titles, but not in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And this is light that's now shining in the world, for the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more into the perfect day. But who will hear for the time to come? What about the work of the ministry? Somebody said, well, how do I get born again? There's only one way. You must be born of the water and of the Spirit. How do you do that? Well, Peter was given the keys to the kingdom of heaven. We find that in Matthew 16. And Peter had to be the one that preached on the day of Pentecost. Why? Because he had the keys to the kingdom. They were picked in their heart and said, men and brother, what must we do? Peter, standing up along with the other 11, said, repent. Is that it? No. And be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Why Jesus Christ? Because that is the name of the Father. John 5 states uh, that Jesus said, I am come in my Father's name. John 17 Jesus said, praying to the Father, said, O Holy Father, I have manifested your name. Keep through your own name those that thou hast given me. What is the name of the Father? Jesus. What is the revealed name of the Father? Jesus. When he came in to Jerusalem on the coat, well, as he rode in, they said, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. What's the name of the Lord, Jehovah God Almighty? The revealed name of God, the revealed name of Elohim the revealed name of Jehovah, the real revealed name of El Shaddai. It is Jesus. There is no other name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved, not only in this world, but in that which is to come. Peter there, having the keys of the kingdom of heaven, said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because that's the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. He said, I'll send the Comforter in my name, John 14. Well, the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost uh, is Jesus. That's a proper name. Father's a title. Son's a title. Holy Ghost, that is not the name. The name, the, the proper name, singular name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. Peter, having this revelation, on the day of Pentecost, when they said they were picked in their heart and said, men and brethren, what must we do? Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody said, well, I don't see a difference. Well, you haven't taken on the name. As many as been baptized into Christ had put on Christ. Everywhere in the book of Acts, from Acts 2, 38, 4, 12, 8, 16, Acts 10, Acts 19, all were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. No one was baptized, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Why? Because it's titles. It's not the name. We missed the mark on that. There's many things that God is correcting now. As closer we come to the day of the Lord, uh, that will be as a destruction from the Almighty so shall it come. And blow the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm in my holy mountain, cry, alas, alas, for the day, the day of the Lord cometh, it is nigh at hand. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. So in this program today, we're going to talk about this work of God and the coming sealing of the church uh, that we will be able to go and stand during the time of great tribulation. It requires a sealing. In Revelation 7, somebody said, well, we're already raptured out of here. I don't think so. If you'll take a look, the Lord does not come the second time without sin and salvation to Revelation 19 with the armies of heaven. Uh, that is the, the armies, plural. Uh, the army there in Daniel 4 is singular. But in Revelation 19, it is plural. Why? What you see in the Shalomite is a word company of two armies. 
The Shalomite is uh, the feminine name of Solomon, just like uh, Charles, the feminine name of Charles is Charlotte. The same thing of Solomon would be the Shalomite. And uh, the Shalomite, what will you see in that Shalomite? What will you see in that perfect, spotless, blameless bride? As it were, the company of two armies. The two armies there, one is that heavenly host of angels, the other is uh, the church of the living God that rides with Jesus uh, on white horses whenever they come down without sin a second time unto salvation, and he will come with 10,000 of his saints there to be glorified uh, there and set up his kingdom in the earth. We see that in Revelation 19. So as we see that sign, there's a sign, these signs in heaven, blood, fire, and fellow smoke, sign, it's a signet. That sign is the Alav Tav, which is the signet, or the Alav Tav, which is the sign, which is Jesus Christ, that's the signature, and Zerubbabel, you are my signet. In other words, revealing Jesus in the last days, while Jesus was in the world, he was the light of the world. Now, he has gone back to the Father, glorified with the Father's own self, uh, sat down with the Father in his throne, now has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. So we pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God as ambassadors for Christ. So the Alav Tov is that sign. That sign is Jesus. Uh, the Alav Tov is everything uh, that God is from A to Z. And the ones that have been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ uh, has put on Christ their wedding garment, and uh, they are coming into this last day work of the ministry, Ephesians 4.11. Now, we see in Revelation 7.1, this is Revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave it to him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel and John. What are those things? Things are the things of faith. Faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. We're earnestly, earnestly contending for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Here it is uh, that we're going to see there's going to be three different sealings, uh, and the sealing is none other than Jesus himself, the Holy Ghost. You're sealed by the Holy Ghost until the day of redemption. To be sealed, we have to walk in the light as he's in the light. Then we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin if we walk in the light as he's in the light. Always uh, receiving the word of God in present truth. Because uh, the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. When that which is perfect has come, then all these things which are in part will be done away with. After these things... There was four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. They hold the four winds of the earth. The wind shall not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, or on any tree. And he said, I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. Now, from the east, sending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And that east and the word of God is RMD, 144, 12 squared. It's a work of the Holy Ghost, and he cried with a loud voice. There's your ministry voice of Jesus, a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed who? The servants of our God in their foreheads, not on their foreheads, in their foreheads. What's in the forehead? That will be the high priest miter, and that miter is the crown that we will receive from the Lord, that crown of that Revelation 6 white horse rider, and it was given to him a crown. That crown is a Stephanos. It's a victor's crown. It was given to him a bow. That bow is not a bow and arrow. It's an ornamental bow made out of fabric, which is that Greek word toxon, which is a fabric ornamental bow, bow that you give to the victor after he's won the battle. It's like what you would say in your trophy to put over the mantle of your fireplace or of your trophies. Jesus gives us this, this bow and crowns us with the victor's crown before the battle even begins. It's a toxin. It's a bow. It's an ornamental bow given to the victor. You're more than conquerors. Well, this is what's happening here. There will be three different ceilings. There's a ceiling whenever you come into birth. Now, let's take a look here. 
when you come in here to the birth in Exodus 28, we're talking about uh, the priesthood, king, priest. Your call is king, priest, the Lord your God, you will reign in the earth. But what does that mean? Is that everybody that's in the body of Christ, or is that a remnant of our seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus? Only a remnant that will hear and obey the word of God in the last days, that will be counted worthy, and that will be the ones sealed. When you see here on the, on the garments of glory and beauty on the high priest, You'll find they took gold, blue, purple, scarlet, and fine, fine linen. They're blue, purple, and scarlet. Scarlet never touched the blue, and blue, the scarlet. The scarlet speaks of the blood, the blood of the worm, and the blue is the heavenly, and the purple there is uh, mixing blue and scarlet together. You get purple king of kings and lord of lords. And if this is a color scheme that you'll see all throughout the word of God, what does that mean? It simply means that this Jesus who was in heaven Right up here on the top shamash, he's a servant branch in that candlestick. We are the branches, he's the vine. He was in heaven, he is the loftov, he is that spirit. He always has been the spirit of God, made himself of no reputation, come into the earth, into the world, to redeem those that were under the law, and then went back to his former glory as God. He is the loftov, he's glorified with the Father's own self. He is that quickening spirit. That is uh, the Alav Tav, the sign. It always has been God, always will be God. And because he's done a work, notice that the branches don't touch the ground, neither of heaven. They're in him, bone of his bone, and flesh of his flesh, just like the cherubim of glory in the mercy seat. Here we find the seal of servants of God in their foreheads. There's going to be a sealing first according to the birth that will be on the shoulders of the high priest. We'll see that. According to the birth, there'll be two stones upon the shoulders of the high priest. There's his head, and there's his shoulders, and then coming down, and then we'll have the two legs. Upon the shoulders of the high priest, these will be onyx stones. It means to blanch or to make white, and they will be... Uh, of the 12 tribes, six on each one on the onyx stones upon uh, the high priest's shoulder. And that's what we're going to see here, uh, there in the ceiling. What does it mean? Take a look. This is an engraver. The engraver is in a ceiling. It's the engraving of a what? There's that signet. There's that sign. What's that? That sign is the sign aloft tov. That is Jesus in you. Gathering all things together in one in Christ Jesus. That is the mystery of God's will from the foundation of the world. Well, that's an engraver in stone. It's a graving of a signet, and you're going to engrave these two stones with the names of Israel, and it'll be according to a memorial for their birth. This will be all the ones that are birthed according to their birth stones. They're on the high priest's shoulder. Now, as it goes on the high priest's shoulder, that's the first sealing there in the day that you were birthed into the kingdom of God, where you repented and then baptized in the name of Jesus Christ uh, for the remission of your sins. You were born of the water, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You're born of the Spirit. Now you're sealed. Now you go on. As, uh, then you go to your next engraving, and that is the work of God. What does that mean? Well, it means you have to find out the will of God and do it. Not a hear of the word, but a do of the word. And we go to Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your body a living sacrifice, holding acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but you transformed by the renewing of your mind. What is that? Well, that is a read the mark of go, and it's according to the children of Israel, according to their work. We're going to see different colors now. We're going to see a Sardis Tobas carbuncle on the first row, second row, an emerald sapphire diamond, third row, ligure agate and amethyst, fourth row, beryl onyx, and a jasper stone. Why? Because there will be difference there, different works that God has called each member of the body of Christ for, and that's doing the will of God in the body of Christ as members in particular. We're going to offer a great work in the Jesus Only training course this month. Never take it. I know it'll be a great blessing to you as the time is drawing near at the coming of the Lord. Until the next time, this is Brother Dennis Spirit saying, Behold the real Jesus. Well, praise God, neighbor. The Jesus Only training course is our offer for this month. 
which consists of four major books, study manuals, along with eight accompanying DVDs explaining the Jesus-only doctrine of Christ. When Jesus said in Matthew 16, Who do men say that I the Son of Man am? Some say you're John the Baptist, some Isaiah, Jeremiah, one of the other prophets. But who do you say I am? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Simon bar John, flesh and blood, had not revealed this in thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Thou art Peter, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I'll give you the keys to the kingdom. Now, Christ is the foundation rock of the church. In the last days, all that have not digged deep and founded their house upon that rock, their house will fall and great will be the fall of it. That's the reason why God has instructed us to do the Jesus only training course, which is a revelation of Christ, the true Christ, and how to know the false deceivers in the last days. So for this month, for your gift of $150 or more, you will receive the Jesus only training course, four study manuals, very in-depth teaching on Jesus Christ and the revelation of Christ which is Behold the Real Jesus Study Manual number one, The Eras of the Trinity, Study Manual number two, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, Study Manual number three, and Christ, the Revelation of the Son of God, Study Manual number four. Neighbor, I know it'll be a great blessing to you as you see this great revelation of Jesus Christ. Again, mention offer, DBM number 170, the Jesus Only Training Course, and we'll get it right out to you. Until the next time, this is Brother Dennis Spirit saying, Behold the real Jesus.